you need to see. Look at the look at the price action clues to that sell, and then the buy, and then the sell that came through. Look at the price action clues. You see them? Fast, fast, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, yeah? Fast, slow down, slow down, slow down, yeah? Fast, slow down, slow down. See the clues starting to come through? They're all there. Every single one of these clues is visible, guys, if you spend some time analyzing them. Take a look at the gold and see if you can spot the clues now. Fast money break off the level. A slowing, massively slowing down phase right through that phase there. The fast money sell off the level there. Quite a slow phase here, allowing us to buy into this, yeah? But quite a slow phase here, a faster phase down, a very slow phase here, yes? A very slow phase there. And then a, a faster move down again, and then look at what happened when we busted the bottom edge. Fast acceleration away from the bottom edge, you see it? Fast and slow, guys. It's everywhere. You look. And it always accelerates from the 50 line down. Because the tipping price is, that's what causes, that's what happens at the tipping price. When you see a tipping price like this and the sellers still press the tipping price, the buyers move away from the balance previously, which was here, and the buyers move to this price here, which is there. You understand? As soon as you get sellers at the tipping price, the buyers that were here before say, no thanks. And the only place those buyers are now buy would be down here. You see it? And obviously when you get down into those areas, you start looking for a buy opportunity if you like the value for the buy trade. So where does anybody see any buys? Well, there's an arbitrage buy right there at that exact price. You see it? You'll see the arbitrage right there, that candle there. Red line goes down, blue line goes down. Arbitrage, buy trade, at the previous lows. A perfect example of another perfect buyable opportunity. You might be saying, but the value was very bearish. Well, was it very bearish or was it just about fair value? Actually, it was slightly more bullish than bearish, wasn't it? Slightly more bullish than bearish at a macro level. I'm not saying it wasn't bearish on a micro world, but remember we had this question yesterday about macros and micros. When we get into a macro level, we take our macro read. Anywhere else, we take the micro read. Well, that's a bottom edge, so that's going to be a macro read. The macro was bullish, so we can take a play on this one. The dollar was quite heavy divergent, so it was a big challenge. I know that. I'm not accepting that. It was a walk. I'm not uh, saying it was a walk in the park, but certainly with the value flip here, this looks pretty good for a sell. Initially, very fast move for the sell. But look at what happened at this point here. This never went any lower at that, st any higher at that stage. The blue line went lower. That tells me that this is now a viable proposition into that macro value bottom edge. And there's a macro buy right there because it is an arbitrage. So worst case scenario, you're going to get your stops at break even plus one and you can walk away from that trade if it doesn't work out for a scratch. And the takeaway has been pretty good. I mean, possibly quite surprising, but the takeaway has been pretty good. Bit of market volatility just now, guys. Lots of noise. That spike on bonds was was pretty fun. Spike on bonds was pretty fun, wasn't it? We uh, we were talking about that top right hand hold. Remember, Super asked the question, why are we not getting the sell coming in? And we says it's because there's a big sell on bonds and copper. 
So, um, you know, you can see that they ran the stops at the top edge for people who didn't have that conversation that we had with Subaru. Um, they ran the stops and they managed to get uh, people uh, all over the place, didn't they? And the good thing is, guys, if, you, if you're confident, we had a conversation this morning about being confident about your entries and just taking part in the trade ideas. If you're confident about your entries, there's no harm in walking away from a trade and just coming back in at another point. You know, we had a conversation about how to avoid holding on to your losing trades and how to let your winners run. And the reason why most people don't do that is because they seem to they seem to wrap every trade up in a big ball of cotton wool, and for some reason it has some personal value to everybody to have that one trade. Trade should never have, one trade should never have that importance that it becomes your all-consuming element of trade. It should never have that quality over you guys. So when you see a trade, and we started to sell into this area here. You can see we got spiked out on the trade eventually. That's okay, we can come back in. We just have to get our stops in place and we definitely had a big enough pop on this one to get our stops in place. We had a conversation, as I said earlier on, about this whole trade here. And obviously we now have a macro level in the background at the 23, 24 area, yeah? So when it hits the macro level, what are we gonna do? We're gonna look at macro values, yes? We're gonna look at macro values. The dollar, that's a big arrow for the sale, isn't it? That's a big sell arrow up here now, isn't it? So that's one massive vote for the dollar, right? The Japanese yen should be the same. It doesn't always have to be the same, but it should be the same. That's another arrow for another sell opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Oil, oil prices, well, this was the reason why we got the pressure coming in in the first place, oil and copper prices and gas prices and various, that, that's starting to drop out. That's a massive reason to now be selling bonds again, isn't it? At the, those higher prices, yeah. Now we talked about copper prices. Did they start diverging at the top edge? Yes, they did. Look, the copper price started to diverge at the top edge again. So that gave you another reason to get short your bond at the top edge because you got the divergence on copper that we were looking for to get the short sell on, correct? Because that's what we talked about, the copper prices and the oil prices. What about the uh, what about the knob spread? Wow, okay, that's a bit of a surprise. So we've got an enormous excuse to be selling bonds into that higher price now as well, isn't it? We're an enormous excuse because the knob spread is massively divergent into this storyline now, isn't it? What about real yields? Real yields have been divergent into that macro massively, haven't they? You see it? Look at the divergence we've got in real yields on a macro scale basis. And this is the idea of why you use macro at macro levels again, because the short term real yield was very, very bullish. But that's not what we're trading at, at a macro level. We're trading a macro real yield. The macro real yield is massively bearish. So this is now going to give me a sellable opportunity, yeah? Look at the number of arrows up here. Did anybody disagree with any of them? So in other words, everybody must have been selling the 24s and the 25s and the 23s, right? Everybody must have been short selling those areas. And did we make a killing on it? Sure did. We sure did, guys. So if I get hung up on this short sell here, I could end up selling it and then and then taking like four or five tick losses and then getting all upset and annoyed and what the hell happened to my sell trade and why did it not work and all that kind of stuff instead. You just see that it's not working. You come off the trade at plus one and you wait for the next trade opportunity, right? And when you get the next trade opportunity, you step in and you deal. You don't attach any importance to any one trade. It's just another trade, guys. It's just another trade. 
And obviously working back into that was perfectly easy. And again, knowing that it's a macro level, you've got to check your macro values. You could have taken a, you could have taken a, uh, certainly a, a Heisman trade around about the 20s, 19s, that's for sure. I think 16 would have been given away way too much money. If you're selling at 16, I think you're giving away way too much money there. Considering that the Heisman was at 21. So, I mean, I think you would have had to put your sell stop order around about the 20s or 19s if you were trading the Heisman uh, rejection of that higher price. I don't think selling at 16s is, is the right trade. Why? Because if you sell at 16s, I would rather actually sell at 12s or 13s than sell at 16s. Do you understand that? I'd rather sell at 12s than 16s. Why would I give away an extra four ticks? Because 16s obviously been a rejection price here. So there's going to be possibly buyers, technical buyers coming in at 14s. So if I sell at 16 and a technical buyer comes in at 14, I'm probably going to be lucky to scratch at 16s. Whereas if the technical buyer's been pushed off the trade at 12s, you know, I can I can simply, you know, know that the technical buyer's now been squished and I'll be at least able to get down to the zero twos. So I'd rather sell lower than sell 16s. But I don't know why we would sell 16s. I think we would definitely be keen to sell 20s. And if obviously you're a pro trader, you should be looking at that top edge and saying 21, let's start selling at maybe about 24, 25, sell side uh, top edges, 24, 25s, uh, get some leans in there as well. There's always going to be a nice lean up there into those high volume areas and uh, just get the sale in with a, a stop of maybe two or three ticks. Remember, the whole idea of the fast and slow narrative is that if you get a fast narrative, the chances are value will build in the direction of the fast narrative. And when I say value, I'm talking about the volume value, the, the profile value, like gold here. So when we got the fast offer here, the POC came from this supply line in here, right? So that's where the sell came. But because of the speed of the move, the chances are this is never going to build above that level, is it? So it's going to be sell side, regardless of what else happens. So you start looking for those sell opportunities. The last area would have been this 22 area here with the level we already knew about, the change of behavior from the background. So when it comes up into that area, you start asking the question, can I get a sell trade? Well, look at the arbitrage you had on that candle, guys. Was that not one of the biggest arbitrages you've seen? Look at it. Look at the size of the arbitrage in that trade at 1414, guys. It's absolutely enormous, isn't it? So you could have taken a sell onto that trade there and tried to get the trade moving. You see, there was a little bit of dollar divergence on a macro scale. Short term was coming up just a little bit, not by much. And you had a huge arbitrage opportunity to deal there, huge. Real yields also macro-wise diverging, but micro-wise, you just had to be patient. You know you're trading in this in a short sell area. You know you're selling it anyway. You know you want to be selling it. In fact, you're not going to be buying it unless you get bids above 24 anyway. And you can see that this has not been a fast money down move. You see that already? It's not been a fast money down move. So you're thinking, okay, that's not good. And you start watching this big volume coming in at 14.20 here, and you say, give me some money here, guys. This is a bit slow for me. This is a bit slow going here. Just read the charts, guys. Read the tape. Get into the habit of making your decision in real time. Don't be fixed. Don't be rigid. Simply read the tape and be fluid, dynamic around those areas and start looking for the opportunity. I want to be long. I don't know where yet. I don't know where yet. Let me look for it. Let me find it. I don't know where it's going to be, but I want to now start looking. Let's see if we can find that arbitrage trade. Let's see if we can get that lean. Let's see if we can get that iceberg order. Let's see if we can get that volume transition, that order book transition trade. Whatever it is you're looking for, you can start looking to get into the deal. Um, dollar bids concerning for equity buyers, for sure. Yeah. Dollar bids concerning for equity buyers. So um, selling coming in below that 82 is obviously starting to become a little bit dangerous. And obviously that takes us into the probability now that the next distribution is going to be this 75 print area. So we end up with a brand new series 
of bits. Bulls need to take 30, uh, 3784 bid. Bears now need to try and keep the pressure on and get offered below 3776s. Yes? Does everybody agree with that? Bulls now need to hold the 3780s up here. Now, obviously, if they're going to go bullish in the short term, they're going to have to take out this level and this level here. Because that's got a POC in the background here. So for the bulls to really take control, for the algorithms to kick in, 37.86 bid. At the moment, sell side, sell side only coming off these areas. And obviously, the bears' next target has to now take out 37.75 at the downside. Do you all agree with that? Are you all doing this, by the way? Are you, are you making these assessments? Are you making these judgments? Are you drawing these ideas on your charts? Are you thinking about the idea and the narrative behind these as stories and being able to take full advantage of them, yeah? I assume so. Talking about who got the short sell at 88, so I'm assuming a lot of you got it. It's the double distribution, of course, into a big volume. POC area at 88s in the background, sell side 88s. Value, massive value divergence into 88 macro, yeah? See it? It wasn't this move, it was this move. So you can see how easy it was to find the right trade, obviously at the perfect time of the day, which is 1400 hours again. And we've obviously got that value volume POC in the background right there, haven't we? So we've got volume there. We've obviously got volume in here. And we've obviously got volume into the bottom edge here. Well, on the way back up, we've taken out that volume. The bids came in hit this volume here, and we came straight through back to the bottom edge volume. So this is now our trade bracket here, 88s to 8730s. That's now our trade bracket. So now we're seeing the trade bracket. We can see where the sell is. You can see where your profit taking is. And obviously everything in between is now noise, and the only trade we should be trying to take is selling pullbacks, correct? Selling pullbacks into key structures.